Hi all. Today I am going to discuss about fitting of soft toric contact lens. Basically when we go for soft toric contact, see if my glass prescription is having a spherical and a very little amount of astigmatic component, then we can go with a spherical contact lens as well. Okay. But if the astigmatism is a little bit higher, then we need to go for uh, toric soft contact lenses. Okay. Suppose a patient is having a prescription with a minus 2 diopter spherical with a minus 1.5 diopter cylinder or a 1 diopter cylinder. Yes, you should go for a toric contact lens. The bookish language says that if the ratio between spherical and cylinder it is uh, lesser than 4 is to 1, then you should go for a toric contact. But actually it is not so, it always depends on the needs of the patient, okay. So if the patient is uh, like, uh, if you just fit a, uh, very much skeptical about his vision, okay, like uh, uh, around minus 4 diopter sphere and minus 1 diopter cylinder, perfect fit it will be around minus 4 diopter uh, spherical and a minus 0.75 cylindrical in the toric contact lens okay so but sometimes the patient will be definitely comfortable with the minus 4.25 or a minus 4.5 diopter of spherical lens okay actually it depends on the need of the patient so why uh, to think about all these things because toric soft contact lenses does it is actually costlier than normal spherical soft contact lenses right so and also the fitting uh, uh, fitting of soft toric contact lenses are also a little bit different okay so earlier methods there were some toric lens stabilizing methods like earlier toric soft contact lens were based on this prism ballasting technique truncations peri ballasting posterior toric surface and dynamic stabilization and there was a combination of all the prism ballasting, uh, so normally most of the torics do have this technique as well. That is uh, like in yearly contact lenses like Bosch and Lom, okay, monthly also Bosch and Lom does have it, this prism ballasting. Now normally how the toric lens used to get stabilized on the eye? Uh, see, the toric lens is having an axis like cylindrical axis we are having in our spectacles so we have to maintain that axis of the cylinder that's the reason it is there is a need to stabilize the toric contact lens suppose the axis is 180 degree if the lens turns to 90 degree definitely the patient will have problem right so that is the reason there there was a need for this in prism ballasting the lower portion of the lens was made heavy okay so base of the lens is thicker than the apex so that's how the lens used to stay on the uh, eye so the lower portion of the lens it is heavy made heavy okay now the upper eyelid will interact with this thin portion the lower eyelid will interact with this heavy portion now uh, if the lens is heavy in the lower eyelid uh, ports portion so you can think about that the decay by t the oxygen supply will be lesser right so you might have some kind of irritation and all okay so that is the thing that is a uh, problem in this type but this prism ballasting design is actually most widely accepted and still now it is used in torix making of torix of contact lenses so prism ballasting there was dynamics double slab off which is not right now used it is uh, the toric contact lens was cut on the uh, this edges were cut actually okay the upper and the lower portion used to be cut and uh, and thinned out so that the lens was made stable this dynamic or double slab off the prism ballast design is actually widely accepted you can see this the lower portion of the lens is thicker so what are things you need to do for a toric contact lens fitting a soft toric contact lens you need to do a very very proper keratometry reading definitely you need to do a careful refraction okay see uh, the patient uh, comes to your contact lens clinic with a glass prescription but you need to check it what is the status you do a proper refraction and then only decide you need to see the diameter okay you need to measure the hvid 
to select the diameter of the contact lens and keratometry reading you will get segment of uh, about the astigmatism axis and also you will be it will be helpful in choosing the base curve okay so refraction should be in the minus cylinder form keratometry to find the base curve okay you all know all these things so normally we add 0.8 millimeter to the flattest k reading suppose the keratometry according to the keratometry 7.8 it is 7.8 plus 0.80 8.60 is a base curve that this way you uh, choose a base curve and you should always think about there is a vertex distance in the spectacle lens so you should always consider the vertex distance compensation for toric lens fitting okay see here uh, if the spectacle refraction it is minus 5 with a minus 1.25 at 180 so vertex adjusted contact lens you should do a vertex distance compensation for the spherical part and then you should do this vertex distance compensation so contact lens will be minus 4.75 with a minus 0.75 at 180 degree so that will be prescribed to the patient so you should now after fitting the toric contact lens uh, assess the fit of the lens by assessing the full corneal coverage centration movement is very much important to see okay if the lens loosely fits on the patient side definitely when the patient blinks the lens will rotate and it will change the axis so definitely the vision will not be stable if the toric contact lens is too much loose very tight also it is problematic so there should be comfort and stable vision and we need to do an axis stabilization we have to concentrate on the three laser marks on the inferior portion of the lens we normally follow the large rule left at right subtract means suppose uh, the uh, toric contact lens is here the axis mark is over here so you put the lens on the patient's eye and tell the patient to blink when the patient blinks you are seeing at the slit lamp okay if the axis is moving 10 degree to the left that means it will add 10 degree to the prescription suppose the lens is plano uh, with a 1.25 at 180 okay now after you feed the lens the lens is moving left side 10 degree okay so you will add 10 to the prescription that means you should prescribe plano 1.25 at 10 degree Similarly, right side if the lens is moving 10 degree, you should subtract from the final prescription. So, this is the left add and right sub. Or else you can do the cat's rule, clockwise add and counterclockwise subtract. That means the lens is moving clockwise, you will add 10 degree. If the lens is moving counterclockwise, you should subtract 10 degree. So, these are all the bookish things, whatever is needed. So, definitely last rule we are going to follow while fitting our toric contact lens but always i will suggest you should go for a proper fitted toric contact lens okay because when the patient blinks it it actually the amount of cylinder is much more it actually gives discomfort to the patient the vision quality deteriorates so always fit a proper toric contact lens okay the fit should be very much proper do a very push-up test do a push-up test a bounce back test okay and see always see that the lens should not be very tight and the lens should not be very flat if the lens is too much flat if the lens is moving too much so definitely it will cause a problem so consider all these things thank you